Hai, Assalamualaikum Jom kita revise sambil berehat Sambil berehat pun Kita boleh belajar tahu dengan tengok handphone Apa tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula Assalamualaikum and hi semua Dalam video kali ini kita akan tengok pula berkaitan dengan magnetic flux Kita tengok dulu apakah yang dimaksudkan dengan magnetic flux Magnetic flux ni apa ya? So magnetic flux is actually a measure of the number of magnetic field lines that cross a given area So by definition Magnetic flux is defined as the scalar product between the magnetic flux density atau kita panggil sebagai magnetic field B with the vector of the area A. So, kita boleh tulis equation untuk kita kira magnetic flux is equal to B dot A and it is equal to B A cos theta where B is the magnetic flux density and A is the area, the surface area of the coil and theta is the angle between the direction of B and A. Nanti kita akan tengok macam mana untuk kita tentukan angle antara B dan juga A. Alright, tapi sebelum tu jangan lupa magnetic flux is scalar quantity and the unit of the magnetic flux is Weber. Okay, sekarang kita akan sambung berkaitan dengan kes pertama di mana kita ada satu plane where this plane is perpendicular to the magnetic field B as shown in the figure below. Kita nampak direction of B ke kanan and the plane is located perpendicular to the magnetic field B. Kita boleh nampak the plane of the coil memotong magnetic field secara berserenjang. And then we need to draw the direction of a vector A which is normal to the plane and in this case A is directed to the right. Dan kalau kita perhatikan dekat sini, direction of B and A adalah sama which are to the right. Therefore, the angle between B and A is equal to zero. Apabila angle antara B dan A bersamaan dengan sifar, bermaksud nilai magnetic flux pada keadaan tersebut adalah maksimum. Okey? Jadi berdasarkan equation kita tadi, magnetic flux is equal to B A cos theta dan bila kita gantikan theta dengan zero, then kita akan dapat nilai magnetic flux is equal to B A since cos zero is equal to one. Okey? Alright, now let's move to the second case where this time the plane is parallel to the magnetic field B. So bagaimana keadaan bila kita kata the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field B? Jadi kita boleh lihat contoh gambar rajah yang ditunjukkan di sini. So kita ada direction of the magnetic field B to the right. So now look at the plane where the position of the plane is parallel to the magnetic field B. And in this case, bila kita lukis direction of the vector A, the arrow must be pointing upward which is normal to the plane. And bila kita lukis arrow untuk A, kita nampak dekat sini di mana angle antara A and B is equal to 90 degree. Sekiranya the plane is parallel to the magnetic field B, so kita akan dapati the magnetic flux is minimum since cos 90 degree will give you value of zero. So pada keadaan ini magnetic flux dikatakan nilainya adalah zero. Jadi kita selesai tengok dua keadaan kedudukan plane of the coil. So bila kita dapat soalan sekiranya tiada diagram, kita boleh bezakan bagaimana keadaan plane itu bila dia perpendicular to the magnetic field ataupun apakah keadaan plane itu apabila dia parallel to the magnetic field seperti yang kita telah discuss sebentar tadi. Okey, sekarang kita akan bergerak 
pada discussion yang seterusnya berkaitan dengan magnetic flux linkage. Ada beza ya, magnetic flux simbolnya seperti yang ditunjukkan di atas ini yang berwarna hitam dan magnetic flux linkage Okay, kita ada perkataan linkage dekat belakang ini dan perhatikan simbol untuk magnetic flux linkage juga agak sedikit berbeza berbanding dengan magnetic flux. Dan untuk kita kira nilai magnetic flux linkage juga tidak sama dengan magnetic flux. Fikir betul-betul, ingat betul-betul, jangan sesekali samakan magnetic flux dengan magnetic flux linkage. Dan bagaimana untuk kita kira magnetic flux linkage kalau dapat soalan? So kita akan guna formula ini di mana magnetic flux linkage is equal to N times magnetic flux where N is the number of turns in a coil and we multiply with the magnetic flux BA cos theta yang baru kita tengok sebentar tadi. Alright? So by definition, magnetic flux linkage is defined as the product of the magnetic flux and the number of turns. Remember. Okay, sekarang kita akan cuba untuk lihat example yang pertama. So, jom kita baca soalan terlebih dahulu. So, here we have a 50 turns coil with cross-sectional area of 5.8 times 10 power of negative 3 meter squared is placed in a uniform magnetic field of 1.5 tesla. Calculate the magnetic flux linkage in the coil when the plane of the coil makes an angle of 60 degree to the magnetic field. Baca soalan betul-betul. So, soalan kata dekat sini, the plane of the coil makes an angle of 60 degree. Means that sudut antara plane of the coil and the magnetic field is 60 degree. Bukan sudut antara A dan B. So, kita tengok pada gambar rajah ini. So, kita ada the plane of the coil. Dia sengit sikit. And the angle between the plane and the magnetic field here is 60 degree. But when we want to calculate the magnetic flux, we need an angle which is between B and A. Jadi, untuk kita kira magnetic flux, kita perlu dapatkan angle antara A dan B. So, langkah pertama, pastikan kita lukis A rho yang melambangkan vektor A which is normal to the plane. As shown in the figure here, we have an A rho which is in red color. So, from this diagram, we can conclude that the angle between A and B is equal to 30 degree. Jadi, baru kita boleh buat calculation kita dengan betul. So, now, in order to calculate the magnetic flux linkage, where magnetic flux linkage is equal to N times the magnetic flux. So, kita kira lah dulu magnetic flux, where it is equal to BA cos theta. So, kita masukkan nilai dengan betul. Okay, BA dan juga cos theta and theta dekat sini adalah angle antara B dan A which is 30 degree. Jadi, jangan salah masuk ya. So, kita dah dapat nilai magnetic flux dan unitnya jangan lupa, the unit of magnetic flux is Weber. Jadi, bila dapat soalan begini, pastikan awak cek betul-betul unit untuk area given in this question. So, untuk soalan ini mudahlah sebab telah diberi nilai area dalam unit meter squared. Jadi, tak perlu untuk you tukar. Sekiranya you dapat nilai area dalam unit centimeter squared, pastikan you tukar kepada meter squared dengan berhati-hati dan dengan betul. Okay? Jadi, sekarang kita dah ada nilai magnetic flux. Apa tunggu lagi? Kita boleh kira magnetic flux linkage in the coil where it is equal to the number of turns and times the magnetic flux yang kita dah kira dekat atas tadi and finally nilai magnetic flux linkage kita bersamaan dengan 0.377 Weber. Unitnya sama ya, Weber. Okay, so sekarang kita dah selesai example yang pertama. Apa kata kita cuba jawab example yang kedua. Hmm, macam mana pula bentuk soalan dia ya? So, jom kita baca soalan terlebih dahulu. So, here we have a single turn of rectangular coil of sides 10 cm 
times 5 cm is placed between north and south poles of a permanent magnet as shown in the figure here. Okay, so given that initially the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field as shown in the figure. Alright, so if the coil is turned by 90 degree about its rotation axis, okay, asalnya kedudukan plane of the coil adalah parallel dengan magnetic field. Jadi berdasarkan gambar rajah soalan yang diberikan ini, so kita tahu magnetic field of the magnet must be come from north pole to the south pole. Therefore, the direction of the magnetic field in this question should be directed to the right. Okay, jadi bila dia kata if the coil is turned by 90 degree about its rotation axis and the magnitude of the magnetic flux is given, okay, magnetic flux density, sorry, is 1.5 Tesla. That's mean magnetic flux density itu adalah magnetic field. Okay, nama lain dia adalah magnetic flux density and it is equal to 1.5 Tesla. So, kita perlu kira apa? So, soalan minta kita kira the change in the magnetic flux through the coil. So, kita perlu kira dulu nilai magnetic flux sebelum dia berpusing. Okay, so initially the plane here is parallel to B as shown in this figure. So, kita akan nampaklah bila kita nak lukis the vector of area A, remember the arrow of the vector A mesti normal to the plane of the coil. Jadi dalam kes ini, direction of A should be pointing upward. Okay, normal to the plane of the coil. Jadi berdasarkan gambar rajah ini, kita nampak lihat bila direction B ke kanan, dan direction of arrow A ke atas means that angle antara A dan B adalah 90 degree. So, bila kita substitute dalam equation magnetic flux BA cos theta, theta is equal to 90 degree. So, kita akan dapat nilai initial magnetic flux iaitu sebelum dia rotate dan nilainya adalah 0 Weber. Boleh? Alright, so sekarang bagaimana pula gambar rajah apabila coil itu rotate? So, lihat di sini, contoh gambar rajah yang diberikan. So, final condition where the plane here is perpendicular to B. Perkataan perpendicular to B bermakna the plane of the coil seolah-olah memotong magnetic field B seperti yang ditunjukkan dalam rajah ini. Dan bila kita nak tentukan angle antara A dan B, kita perlu lukis arrow of the vector A which is normal to the plane. Seperti yang ditunjukkan dalam gambar rajah ini, arrow A adalah ke kanan. And based on this diagram, we can conclude that the angle between A and B is equal to 0 degree since A ke kanan, B pun ke kanan. So, bila kita masukkan dalam equation magnetic flux BA cos theta, kita boleh dapat nilai magnetic flux at final condition is equal to 7.5 times 10 power of negative 3 Weber. Alright, so sekarang kita teruskan lagi solution kita. Untuk menjawab soalan di mana soalan minta kita kira change in the magnetic flux iaitu perubahan dalam magnetic flux. So, delta V is equal to magnetic flux final minus magnetic flux initial dan akhirnya jawapannya adalah 7.5 times 10 power of negative 3 Weber. Boleh? Okey, saya rasa setakat di sini dulu video untuk kali ini. So, dalam video seterusnya, kita akan discuss berkaitan dengan Faraday's Law, Lenz Law dan juga Induce EMF. Jumpa lagi. Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye.